Hi, Melanie Chris here with Community Therapy Services. Wanting to talk to you about activities that you can do with items that you might find around your house to work on skills to help with school. Today I want to talk about items you can use from your kitchen to uh, work on fine motor skills various types of fine motor skills, in-hand manipulation, being able to move things from palm to finger and finger to palm, being able to flip things uh, in your fingers, uh, the ability to grade pressure um, softer or uh, harder to be able to uh, move things or manipulate things, the uh, ability just to develop more fine motor strength in your hand. So there's a lot, a lot of different things that uh, you can work on with some simple things that you might find in your kitchen. And that's what I just did. Went to my kitchen, found a whole bunch of materials that I might be able to use as part of my therapy sessions or things that you can use at home with your students. So let's start with straws and toothpicks. Most people probably can find some straws and some toothpicks in their house. I'm going to pull a few of these things out. A lot of activities, when you, I encourage you to go just look around in your kitchen, look at things, and creatively think, what could I do with that to make it fun with my child, with my student, while working on necessary skills that they need to work on. A lot of times creating games or competitions can be fun between parent and student or therapist and student. And so something or a game that you could play is how quickly you can get five, 10 or whatever number you, you pick toothpicks in the straw. So ready, set, go. So we're working on a lot of grasp skills. Uh, we're looking, uh, working on the ability to oppose our thumb to our um, index and middle finger. And this should translate to working on developing a pencil grasp. So that's a fun activity you can do with a straw and some toothpicks. Before I put all the toothpicks away, another activity you can do is if you have, some people might have paper in their kitchen, but I have a few things over here that I got elsewhere, not in my kitchen. And one is, well, this is a foam paper, but a construction paper and a toothpick. Uh, you can have a ch your child or student work on making letters, shapes, numbers, using a toothpick and just poking through the paper. So poking holes to make whatever shape, design, letter, number. If you're going to work on letters or numbers, I would encourage you, so I was just working on the letter E, to have them start where they would start and follow the exact pattern that they would when they were, when, if they were using a pencil. All right, all right, so what else might we find in the kitchen? I, uh, uh, most of you probably have a colander in the kitchen, and I'm going to borrow something that I found in another room, some pipe cleaners that some of you might have. Uh, some, something fun to do with students would be to see how quickly they could push a pipe cleaner or so many pipe cleaners all the way inside. I know I have actually a couple calendars, so if you by any chance had a couple, you could do a race. Or if you don't have a couple, time, see how long it takes the student to get so many uh, pipe cleaners in the calendar and then see how long it takes you and have a competition that way. So that's something fun you can do. Again, most of these things I'm showing you so far are really, uh, really helpful in working to develop a pencil grasp. What else? Let's see. Pipe cleaner. Oh, let's see. Okay. I, I had some little containers. You probably have some containers that you would end up going to throw away and you could use the lid and poke some holes in it and do something similar. So instead of a colander, See how quickly, and I just put some real little holes, you can push, and this one's more challenging with this small container, but how long it takes to push the entire 
pipe cleaner into some container that you poked holes through. As another example. All right, here's a fun one with some food items. So, a lot of households have some Cheerios, some kind of cereal with a circle in the middle, and spaghetti. So we're gonna get out some spaghetti and some Cheerios. And I'm borrowing something from another room, some Play-Doh. You could use styrofoam, so you might find some styrofoam somewhere as an alternative. So I'm going to just make a little blob. Not too flat because we're going to take our spaghetti, break it in half. You could have your, the student help you with this. And we're going to poke some noodles into our Play-Doh. Again, this is something that you could make into a competition if you wanted to add some extra challenge and fun. And then take your Cheerios and let's see how quickly we can get one Cheerio on each spaghetti noodle. Now, you can, you can make this one uh, make this a little bit more difficult by perhaps using tweezers or tongs. There's lots of different, we talked about the straw earlier. Take that straw, bend it in half. Now you've got some tongs. Whoop. I did not try this earlier to see if Cheerios would be something I could pick up. Ooh, I, I can. Very challenging where you have to grade the pressure just right to be able to, whoop, didn't get it. Scooting it back over. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there goes the straw. So this is a challenging task, but a very good one. A lot of concentration required. I still didn't get it. Got it. Got that one. So um, this could be an activity that you could use with some students that are a little bit older that would be an, a big challenge for them that they would uh, enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to put away our spaghetti and our Cheerios. There's lots of, speaking of tongs, there are lots of different things that you could do or find in your kitchen to turn into tongs or to use like tongs, such as the straw, put our Play-Doh away. I found some strawberry haulers, those might, those would be good, uh, clo or chip clip, some larger tongs, and you can even make your own tongs. Save your popsicle sticks. So save your popsicle sticks and borrow from another room some rubber bands if you can find them. And if you have a pom-pom, that would be fantastic, or just crumple up a piece of paper. Take your two popsicle sticks, wrap a couple small rubber bands around the top, and then insert the pom-pom in between the two, and now you've got some tongs that you can use to pick up some smaller things. You can put something else in there to make it open wider if you need a wider uh, opening, uh, uh, tongs that open wider, or tweezers that open wider. So lots of things that you can do with these uh, tweezers or tongs. So let's talk about some. Some people might use this as an as an alternative to using clothespins and take it and put it onto your pencil and then you, you hold on to 
like if this were uh, closed and it'd come down a little further and you'd hold on to it with your what we like to call our stop fingers our ring finger and our pinky finger don't do anything other than stabilize just kind of hang out but these fingers do the work and so this could be a grip tool that could help with the chip clip what else with the tweezers we could play some games have an egg carton and some manipulatives now some manipulatives in the kitchen might be lucky charms <laughs> we might use some lucky charms manipulatives and we could uh, do things like see how quickly we can put these items in each of the egg uh, container openings or I have two of each uh, matching and make sure or the, the parent or the therapist could have um, the an item in each opening and where the student has to match or the student just has to find the matches and put the matches in themselves so that they're matching so you could play a game like that you could play a game like um, drop it like it's hot where you're picking up things with some tongs and dropping it in the appropriate container you want to make sure sometimes some cereal can squish easily so this is another good activity to for to, to work on adjusting the amount of pressure used uh, with your hands so those are all fun games and you can modify them you can use different tweezers and tongs you can use an egg carton you can use little containers that you find around your kitchen as a place to drop into for fun games you can also take your tweezers and play a game a stacking game so I'll just take these for example I was trying this earlier we'll see if it works well I had some pennies in my kitchen in one of the drawers and I'm gonna take these large tongs and I'm gonna see if I can stack some pennies all with heads up so I'm gonna have to adjust and move find one if it's not heads up I'm gonna to have to figure out ways that I can flip it over and then bring it over here and stack it so really working on adjusting pressure with the hands fine motor control to twist move manipulate and stack so you get the picture so many things like these are just some things that I thought of uh, just this evening when I was looking around in my cabinets and drawers but there are others I want to show you okay so we've done toothpick and straw we've done toothpick and construction paper pipe cleaner in the colander pipe cleaners in the containers Cheerios and spaghetti um, stacking we oh I wanted to show you speaking of spaghetti okay have you ever played the game kerplunk my kids and I my boys and I used to love to play well I have some styrofoam cups here and I created my own version of kerplunk by poking spaghetti noodles in the uh, cup cutting out the bottom of this cup cutting out the bottom of this cup and then putting an opening here okay it's probably best if you tape that but um, then you can maybe you have some cereal that's round because usually kerplunk is with marbles um, so I have some crunch berries <laughs> and I'm gonna dump the crunch berries in here okay and then you can take turns looking and very carefully trying to decide which piece of spaghetti noodle can you take out and drop the least amount of crunch berries oh one came out the bottom right here so so and the person with the least amount of crunch berries or whatever the item is in here um, is the winner at the, at the at the end so anyway so that's a fun game that you can play kerplunk homemade version very cheap homemade version <laughs> out of kitchen supplies 
Okay, I'm going to set this down here. All right, so let's see. Uh, Ziploc bags can come in handy. Most of you would probably have Ziploc bags in your kitchen. One thing that I saw someone had suggested was taking a straw, putting it in a Ziploc, sealing the Ziploc as much as you can, and then blowing into the Ziploc to create a balloon. Quickly closing it and sealing it up, you've got a little balloon. And sky's the limit on the types of things you can do with balloons and uh, things like a bal um, balloon toss, okay? Um, working on eye hand coordination. You can take a paper towel holder and you can draw some design. So you could do this with this, or if you have an actual balloon, that'd be a great idea too. Um, drawing maybe some animals on the balloons and using the paper towel to maybe have a, a race um, or to encourage your, your child or your student to quickly push it across the room and into the barn. Oh, what else? Um, tennis, uh, balloon tennis, where you're having the student tap the balloon. This is not, this is a lot harder than an actual balloon. However, um, for students where hitting with a balloon is very easy, this would be a nice grade up or step up another, a nice ch extra challenge, uh, an added challenge. Okay, also with Ziplocs, we can fill those with various sensory materials and create a sensory uh, Ziploc, flour, rice, if you have access to water beads, um, Play-Doh even. And if you're going to create a sensory Ziploc, make sure you seal it with extra tape on the outside so it doesn't squeeze out. Uh, so lots of fun things you can do with a Ziploc as well. All right. Let's see. Okay. One other thing I wanted to mention with Play-Doh is that with your tongs, you can create designs and work on finger strengthening at the same time while you're creating some cool designs using tongs. Uh, and again, working on uh, separating the two sides of the hand, working on using our go fingers. I like to, well, I believe this was uh, an idea from the handwriting clinic from Jan McCluskey, um, the handwriting, handwritingclinic.com. She has a lot of great fine motor uh, clinics and workshops. I'm pretty sure that's where I learned this, uh, that these are our go fingers and these are our stop fingers. So we want our go fingers to do most of the work. Sometimes I'll put green stickers on these fingers and red stickers on these fingers as a reminder to use these. So anytime we're using our uh, strawberry holers or uh, any uh, other tweezers, we're doing a uh, doing a nice job practicing using our go fingers. All right, what else? Have I exhausted everything on my table over here? No, I have not. Uh, container count. Okay, so again, I found this container, cut a, cut a very small hole because I also want the student to work on pushing with a little more force to get it inside of the container. And so you could do something where let's count how many pennies there are. So let's put them all in our hand. Okay, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be working on palm to finger translation with stabilization. That's just the technical term from, for moving things from your palm to your fingertip while holding on to some other things at the same time. So can your child do that or your student? and then push it in. So there's one. Oops, I've got a lot and I just dropped one. <laughs> Here comes two. A little too many in your hand at once. <laughs> Three. And then you just continue on and count how many you have. You can do that with both hands and work on um, that palm to finger. You could also count them this way and work on finger to palm, and then with stabilization, while you have them keep holding on, like so. So anytime you can find containers and cut little holes in them, 
uh, and, and use them. Well, you can store things, various things in them and cut little holes in the top and use them to uh, work on using a pincer grasp. Uh, would be a really good skill to work on that would translate to buttoning is another example. Okay, looking at my list uh, with the pennies or, or Cheerios or any cereal for that matter, think about practicing letter formation. Again, start at the starting point. So if I'm going to make the letter E, I'm starting at the top and I'm making a big line down and I'm going to jump to the top, make a little line over, in the middle, little line over, the bottom, little line over. And I made the E. So you can do that with um, letters, numbers. Always encourage students to pick the pennies up straight from the table instead of sliding them off. That's cheating. Try, try to pick up from the table um, and practice that finger to palm translation with stabilization. And then one at a time putting them away, adding that extra little challenge. Okay, straw, ah, okay, another straw activity. I discovered that, again, these are some Lucky Charms marshmallows, some lightweight cereal, and you can blow and have a race to see who gets maybe uh, you're, you're the rainbow and the student is the uh, horseshoe here and you're seeing who gets to a certain location first or picking it up with a straw by sucking in. Okay, so lots of fun things you can do with Lucky Charms or other cereals for that matter. Oh, speaking of Lucky Charms, I wanted to uh, show you that you could create a memory game. So I have two of each. You can mix them up, put them underneath the cups. And it's going to be hard to visualize this, but if you have eight cups, and you just do it just like a matching game. Getting a little cluttered here now, but you're going to do it just like a matching game where you have eight cups or however many cups, and a different one is under each one, and you are trying to find, e each of you are taking turns, and you're trying to find the ones that match. So you can do so many fun things with things you find, so many fun activities with things you find in the kitchen. I have almost exhausted my list. But a few more, looks like. Cup catch. Okay, you might have a little clementine or orange or something small enough to fit in the container. And you could play catch with a cup, working on a hand coordination. You could um, do some balancing activities where you're putting a larger fruit of some kind on the top. Maybe you do this on the way to lunch, on the way to eat lunch. You're encouraging them to do, uh, to do that, um, a balancing activity. So paper towel holder, even fruit can come in handy when uh, working on fine motor skills and uh, hand coordination. All right, looking at my list, I might have made it through the list. All right, let me make sure I didn't forget anything. So we uh, talked about using a toothpick, inserting them into, into the straw toothpick on construction paper to make letters, numbers, and designs, using a pipe cleaner and pushing it, into, pushing it into a colander, using a pipe cleaner and pushing it into a slit of a container that you found in the kitchen that you cut a hole through, um, putting Cheerios on spaghetti that you had inserted into Play-Doh, using that, you doing it with your fingers or with tongs, which is a great, an added challenge. Uh, the homemade version of Kerplunk with um, styrofoam paper cups and spaghetti noodles. Uh, we talked about making a Ziploc balloon and we talked about all the different kinds of tweezers you might be able to make, find or make um, out of straw or with a chip clip, strawberry, hol strawberry holers or out of um, 
uh, popsicle sticks and being able to play games like dropping things into egg, egg cartons, matching things um, in the egg carton, playing the game uh, seven up where you're trying to stack the first person to stack seven pennies um, or stack seven items without them falling over or um, playing drop it like it's hot where you are taking tongs and drop you know dropping them and trying to get them into a container Dro dropping the manipulatives into a container uh, we talked about using a chip clip or a clothespin as a gripper with a pe pencil we talked about practicing um, moving things from palm to finger um, and inserting into a container uh, that we had cut a slit in in as well uh, we talked about making letters, numbers, and designs with cereal or, or coins. We talked about having a, a race um, with a straw to blow items or to pick them up um, by sucking through the straw and putting them in another container. Uh, we talked about um, playing catch with a cup and balancing with a um, paper towel holder. And we talked about making a, using a Ziploc or a balloon uh, to play balloon tennis, balloon toss, create a, a, a stress ball or a stress container filled with Play-Doh, rice flour, water beads, um, or um, balloon tennis with the paper, hold, paper towel holder or pushing an animal into a barn that you had drawn on top. And then the only other thing on my list, oh, two other things on my list, was, was um, cutting straws. Um, into pieces and then stringing them to make a necklace. Of course, you could do that with macaroni as well. Uh, you can string things uh, with pipe cleaners. You can string things with strawberry, strawberry with um, spaghetti noodles. You can even string things with shoelaces. And I did want to show you real quickly. This probably won't be in your kitchen, but it just made me think when I was thinking about stringing things. That if you're working, if you have a student that wants to, or that needs to work on shoe tying, and you have access somewhere to a black shoelace and a white shoelace, uh, connect the two, and then put lace this into a shoe so that one half is black and one half is white, and it just really helps uh, to for the student to visualize. Uh, as you're demonstrating to, to be able to see more clearly the steps they need to take when the two sides are different colors. So that's a total side note that I wanted to add in there. Um, but cutting these uh, straws can be good practice at home. And then the last thing I had forgot to mention, oh, actually, I almost forgot this one, putting some dish water uh, in a little container and taking the straw and um, blowing in it to try to see, make letters or designs. And finally, you can use a spoon for so many things, balancing, playing games, picking up things, dropping it. A lot of the games we mentioned earlier with tweezers, um, you could change that up and use a spoon instead uh, and uh, have some fun with that. So this was a lot, probably the longest video that I've done uh, as, as far as intervention ideas. A lot of those things can be used in person at home. Um, so as a parent, if you're a parent watching this, uh, having fun with your child and doing those things together and doing things in a competitive way can make things so much more engaging and fun when they're involved with you. As a therapist in person, the same, the same applies. Uh, you can also do so many, almost all of these things you can do also uh, using telehealth. So if you are a therapist who is working with a student online, most of these activities, if you had this, the materials on your end and the child has the materials on their end, you can have those races or those competitions. Who can do this the fastest? How long does it take you? How long does it take me? And you can be doing some of the same things on your end that they are doing on their end. And demonstrating, you can demonstrate uh, the instructions and model what you want them to do, and then they can copy and uh, imitate what you have asked for them to do. So, so many things just out of the kitchen that uh, you can use to have fun, with your students to work on helping them to develop some of those fine motor skills that can help them really in life 
and in school. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you got some uh, fun ideas to use at home and maybe it even helped you to think of some other ideas that you can use with other items in your kitchen. So have fun exploring and uh, uh, enjoy some of these ideas.